Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we're going to be discussing some other topics that come up all the time. And I really love this because I have actual emails to refer to. Um, these are coming direct from my potential clients and actually past clients. This is Michael Clark. Um, he contacted me about a multicam MGMB 5x12 system he found. Uh, the system comes with an automatic tool changer, vacuum table, 16 horse Columbo spindle. He called Multicam and asked when it was built. It was built in 2003 and was told that any parts for this model are no longer available. The guy who's selling it is selling it for $4,500, and the guy claims it's been in storage for months. Uh, I, he says here, I have a feeling to walk away from it, but I wanted your professional opinion. Of course, it's been in sitting in a shed, and I was told it was working before they stored it, which is what most sellers always say. Sounds too good to be true. What do you think? So what I did is I got with Michael, um, and again, being his past client, um, we actually scheduled a consultation. Um, the consultation was $80, and this $80 investment, I believe, actually saved this client $2,000, and you'll see why as we go through this. But when I get these questions about these older pieces of equipment, any older robotic piece of equipment, there are lots of variables to deal with. Um, it was really interesting when Michael told me, because I always ask everyone, whoever's looking at buying used equipment, what is the seller's story? Give me the back story that you're being told. And he explained to me that the seller explained to him, uh, apparently he's a carpenter, and the guy, I guess it's a friend of a friend, so to speak, and he's a successful carpenter in Chicago, and he's upgrading his machine. Now, that's a hell of an upgrade, considering even if this machine is from 2003, if it's working fine, it's still a 5 by 12 model with a Columbo spindle, which ATC spindle, 16 horse, you can machine virtually anything dealing with woodworking with ease. So when he said that, okay, maybe that's, that's plausible. Okay, he's upgrading. It's an older machine. He needs more uh, horsepower, so to speak, in the shop. Maybe he's buying multiple pieces of equipment, whatever that may be. He then uh, proceeded to tell me that this seller explained to him that he, this machine, of course, runs on three-phase electric. Like so many other professional-type robotics, uh, you're going to require more electric in this format uh, to support the electronics that this equipment has. No big deal. Um, he also explained that the, the new shop that this seller is in has a kiln and also has its own sawmill. And I believe that because if you see all this wood back here, wherever this thing is being stored, you can see there is quite a bit of money in what he has here in just raw materials. So after hearing all this, and then he said the kicker of this whole thing is that he explained that the seller says – they want $10,000 to have the electric company, or the electric company, I should say, wants 10 k to come out and install three-phase electric in the new shop. And he doesn't want to do that to support this machine. Now, that to me raises a red flag. And why I say that is most people already know in commercial shops, especially a shop with a kiln and a sawmill, three-phase electric is standard. And $10,000 is a drop in the bucket for what a machine like this would go for. And just so we're all on the same page, guys, this machine right here, new, would easily be over $50,000, okay? So to think about a 6,000-pound piece of steel and the capability of this unit in the right hands, especially for a carpenter who is saying that $10,000 he just doesn't want to pay to put three-phase electric in a shop, and we already know most of the equipment he has, at least defining what he's already telling this uh, potential buyer – is it would require it most likely anyways. So that's a red flag, okay? So Mike and I scheduled a call. We talked. We discussed that. I told him there's a red flag there. And I had asked him, like I asked all of you who contact me about these used good deals that you guys find. I said, have you seen the machine move? No, the guy claims that the machine moved. Okay. Uh, we went through it. And I said, look, Mike, you know, truth be told, it's a paperweight until you see it move. Okay, we don't know if any of this is in good shape. Uh, we really just know that he has the unit. Here's a spindle. 
And again, everything here looks to be okay. Again, we see a, uh, a ball screw right here. This machine is the real deal as far as being heavy duty. So again, we're dealing with a full commercial chassis. The big thing here is, you know, looking at electronics like this, sitting in this shop or wherever the hell it is, we really don't know any of the backstory on this unit. Okay, so it's basically a barn find, so to speak, and what we're trying to do is, you know, mitigate the risk of whoever this person is buying this, and we want to ask the right questions because, again, without seeing everything, we really know nothing. In this particular instance, the actual seller was approximately an hour away from where Mike was located in his sign shop, and again, you know, the deal is a great deal. Mike understood what, like many of you do, this machine could do to his business. And with that kind of price, it makes it very affordable. Pending, pending, the machine is automation worthy, so to speak. And what does that mean? That means that you have to go through this machine wholeheartedly, take no one's word for it, because again, a seller is usually going to be about 60% honest in the sense that the picture is describing the truth of the matter. Meaning, look at the picture closely, define the picture, and until you get there and actually feel all the bearings, see the linearity of the axis themselves, you know nothing. And you still won't know nothing until power is connected to this system. So after reasoning with Mike about this, we talked about it, and I said, Mike, truth be told, the best thing you could do is offer this guy $2,500 for this machine because you have not seen it move. And if we're going to do a retrofit, we're looking easily at thousands of dollars to do the retrofit, which is well worth it, pending, pending, of course. You understand that what this machine is capable of. Mike, of course, understands that. He realizes that, you know, we're looking at a machine that can easily, easily bring in you know, thousands of dollars. You know, once it's retrofitted and done correctly, you make sure the vacuum table and everything works. And we go through, we do a full-scale retrofit on it, and you've got a pristine machine. Now, the other perspective many of you look at, I have a couple clients I work with that strictly do flipping of robotics, and they make a really good living doing it. They'll look for systems like this that are local. They then schedule to go pick it up, and then they go and factor in all of the retrofit costs, and they figure just like a house, whatever the renovation costs, they're going to do that, and then they ask more for the machine. Because this machine fully retrofitted, even at its age, due to the fact that it's a commercial level machine, the size, the fact that it has a vacuum table, uh, everything, even if we do the whole spindle upgrade and everything, just going with a more modern unit, you're still looking at about an additional $10,000 you can pull out of this machine. No problem. I mean no problem. And especially if the table is repainted and, you know, really gone over just to make it look cos not only uh, cosmetically sound, so to speak, but also, of course, mechanically. OK, uh, we know for a fact and I've explained this to him that this table would have been easily sold for 15 to 20,000 had, of course, uh, the actual seller was able to show automation with the unit. But of course, being we don't see automation, this is where the most potential is. This is where most of you guys start drooling because then you realize, hey, I can get this at a really good price and I know you've worked with you before. I know you can do it. But if you do it, what's that going to cost me? We go over that. And I still told him, I'm looking, you know, I still see 2,500 bucks here or basically scrap iron because until we know for sure what this unit requires, you know nothing. And you still have to drive and quantify. I have to drive an hour just to see this 6,000 pound unit and see if everything in it makes sense. So after discussing this with Mike and I told him, I'd say max price I go is 3K. I said 2,500 I'd go with, go with that. And I said, have him do a promissory note. And actually, you know, actually, uh, Mike was the one that actually said, you know, uh, I, I might offer to give him full price if I can test it with three phase. And I said, OK, that makes sense. I said, I said, that's more than fair if you can test that with three phase and he's willing to do that. Most of them sellers I've encountered they're kind of weird. They'll tell you bits and pieces and dribs and drabs of the story. And then when you go to offer a price, they'll typically, you know, they get kind of shunned, so to speak, as far as letting you actually look at the machine in depth, 
go over things. They're looking for a quick flip, no questions asked, get, you know, 30 yards, 100 feet, whatever it is, whichever happens first, that's what they're looking for. So Mike had, said, had actually come up with the idea, you know, I wouldn't even mind giving him the money if I could at least get it back to my shop where I've got three phase and test it. I said, you know what, then it'd be fair. Then the price is fair. But if we don't know what automation is present on this chassis, you're buying a piece, uh, basically a paperweight. That's what you're buying. So again, if you don't mind starting over, then we can do that. You know, I can automate anything pending it fits your budget. But is it worth it? You know, and it's like I said, I brought up the house idea of flipping. It's the same thing. How many contractors are you going to hire to do the job to get it right so you can flip it and make, you know, whatever money you're going to make? Or in this case, you're going to keep the house and live in it. I mean, the same principle, regardless of what you choose to do. So overall, we actually... Uh, he got off the phone with me and he got back with me very quick. He said, Vince, I gave the dude a call and explained everything to him and offered him $2,500 cash and the balance on a promissory note. He said he would have to think about it. I said I haven't seen it run and said he would find a video of it working. He said he could find a video of it working. I've heard this many times before, guys. I mean, if they don't have a video of it uh, of you know within the last couple weeks you don't want a video of it working six months ago okay when it's been out of commission we want to see a video of it working a week ago when they unplug the machine and just begin storing it we know that thing has been sitting in storage a hell of a lot longer than that he says he has no clue which and again that sounds out of place something like that on the value of that machine it's out of place We'll see if he goes for it, and if he does, great, and if he doesn't, no sweat off my back. Thanks so much for talking this morning. I'll let you know what his response is. Now, this was yesterday at 11.32 a.m., okay? Here's the following email I received. Vince, you won't believe this, but he just called me back and took the offer. He said he has all the confidence in the world that it will work. I told him that I'm glad he does, but I don't, I don't until I see movement. I guess I'll have to make plans for picking it up. And I congratulated him. And, of course, I said, let's hope she'll move and the bearings and ball screws are sound. When you get there, don't be afraid to have him stop by your shop when it's set up to have him configure it for movement because he is the owner of the system. Once again, support is going to be limited. These are things I always tell you guys when you're buying used equipment. If this guy is claiming that this was his machine – then he should have instantly said, hey, you know what, I'm so convinced, if he's so confident it's, it's going to work, he should have said, hey, you know what, I volunteer. If you get it working, man, not only will I come pick up my money, I'll show you the settings of the machine. That's just common sense, okay? So I'm kind of, in a way, I'm kind of shocked that he didn't actually put that in the email because the guy never said that to him. And, of course, I hope he does follow through with that that he moves forward. But we look at the time here. This is 11.39 a.m. So when he actually messaged him this, this actually came after. Um, this is 11.32. And this is 11.39. So uh, excuse me, that actually came before. So we're looking at seven minutes time. Seven minutes time saved this guy $2,000 on this chassis. Now, if he has to go pick it up, I want you guys to quantify that with your own time. you got to go pick it up. That's a 6,000-pound unit. You need a flatbed truck. You're not going to put that usually in the back of a U-Haul. And if you are, you're still going to need a forklift and all kinds of heavy artillery to get in and out of your shop. Either way, if you have the accessibility to it, it is more than reasonable if you were doing a full-scale retrofit on this particular chassis. That is a very good deal, once again, starting from scratch. Pending, of course, the unit is unusable. Now, of course, it's got 2003 servos on it, which, again, um, I have no, no purpose to see servos being used in any type of carpentry work in terms of what your pricing is in comparison to a stepper where we can get the same exact accuracy uh, doing the same type of work. There's just no reason to spend that. Um, so again, I would highly recommend going with more modern hybrid steppers. You're fine with that. The Colombo spindle is great in an ATC changing category, but keep in mind if you're using Mach 3, you'll need a specific screen set to be made to support that ATC spindle because natively Mach 3 does not support it and Mach 4 does not support it. So keep that in mind. So these are things will work out, you know, but overall, I'm glad to say that that little conversation, that $80 investment of my time and his, that saved him $2,000. Okay, right off the top, he was able to negotiate, and boom, we dropped it down. And this guy says he has all the confidence in the world it will work. 
But let, let's look at the facts here. Let's say it doesn't work. Let's say Mike gets that back to his house or his shop and it doesn't work. He still got the table for the 2500 He really didn't lose anything. And, of course, the owner, uh, or I should say the, the original seller, I don't think he's going to be too heartbroken either because who wants that stored in a shop where it's basically just taking up space? And, again, it's a paperweight. I mean, if it's not doing anything, a lot of the sellers look at them as paperweights. Over time, especially in an industrial environment, especially in a commercial facility, that's shop space he could be using for other components. So don't be afraid to negotiate, but be logical. The price should always be logical. Before you make investments like this, I highly recommend, whether it be me or anyone else, talk to someone. And again, deal with someone you trust. Understand that. You're making an investment in a robot, potential robot, pending, of course, everything else is sound. If it is not sound, you're going to be forced to replace, and replacing can also mean custom work. Now, custom always means cash. The word custom itself in robotics or for anything else always typically is tied to another word, cash, and it's a fact. Okay, We know that that four-letter word, cash, always comes up. As soon as any word that custom comes, and especially when we're dealing with machining on a machine that, again, you're, you're looking at, what, 18 years old? I mean, any bearings. Bearings are usually easy to source, but when we're dealing with ball screws and brackets and things like that, we don't know what the ways are on the machine, if everything is smooth or if there's any type of abuse. We don't know. So these are things to factor in. Mike is already aware of that. But even at that cost, let's say he invests you know, six to 10000 in doing the retrofit, he still stole that machine because it'll be brand new by the time it's done. Okay, so it's a real question here of what you're doing. Now, in his particular case, him and I have already spoke. He asked if uh, I would actually take a trip to Chicago to go see him. I would do that. I do offer that for clients um, that, again, are uh, more of a bigger corporation because it's not cheap, guys. I mean, you have to think about that. This is big. I mean, I have to go there at the fly. I have to, you know, shut down my store because, again, I'm the only one running it. So, I mean, this is a tedious thing, but if it saves the headache, of doing it right where we could say, okay, you need this standoff. We have to go through to replace this ball screw. Uh, we have to have this made. We can make these brackets. Everything else seems good. We go over all the parts. It makes sense in the long run. These are, these are totally doable systems pending everything else fits in place. So again, this I felt is a really, really good video uh, tutorial to talk about because so many guys look at saving money and looking at used equipment is fine to do if you're practical. Like I said, to spend $80 to save him 2000 I think anybody out there would agree that's a hell of an investment. Okay. And the other factor is if, again, he hires me, he already knows we've worked in the past, he's got the trust factor already there knowing that he's going to have the job done right. So when you look at it from that perspective, you got sound advice that worked. It totally worked. And we put together a good solution. It came out well. Hopefully he goes and picks this up. And with you know all things being considered, hopefully it does power up and everything is fine. Nothing needs to be replaced other than you know the electronics. And we go from there. You know, I mean, everyone wins in this case. Not all cases are like this because so many guys think they're going to save money by buying a cheap chassis at an automation auction or something similar, something they've seen online. This particular instance, I believe he said his son found this chassis on, I think it was uh, an ad online, like a Facebook ad, something like that, and uh, offer up one of those uh, kind of ads. And that's what got him thinking, you know, and, and he was smart. He jumped on it. We talked. And he was adamant. He's like, man, I need to talk to you right away. And again, I was going to do it later in the week. We talked yesterday. We put together that plan and boom, that worked. And again, these are great ideas to save you guys money as long as you're going into it with open eyes. And again, I have no problem investing my time. You guys are, again, uh, trying to do the right thing. No one wants to pay more than they have to, especially for a machine you don't know is going to run. This made perfect sense. And again, if you're looking at buying machines from auctions, I cannot emphasize enough, be very, very careful. Because usually at an auction, it's kind of like buying a car at an auction. They never let you drive it. It's just, this is what we're selling. So if you buy it and it's a turd, it's a turd. You're polishing a turd. There's only so much you can do with it. Okay, so you buy a Bridgeport mill that you paid $1,000 for. It's from 1989. 
and you think everything looks good because somebody put a new coat of paint on it and you haven't checked the bearings and the ways and everything else that needs to be done and then you're looking at motor mounts and you know dealing with the electronics and then you have specific uses for it I'm telling you right now you can tack on easily three to six sometimes seven thousand dollars depending on what needs to be replaced especially if that that word that's tied with cash comes up which is custom we can make anything. I mean, I can seriously say I can make any component we require to get the machine automated. But by the same token, it comes a point of no return, so to speak. And again, I will never lose a client because I'm telling them, hey, you know what? We can do it just to get the job because in the long run, I'll lose clients. That's, that's just not practical. So again, be realistic. Ask. Paying, uh, again, for quality advice, someone who knows, do that first. Always do that first. If you can do that, do it. In this particular instance, this is uh, proof is in the pudding, so to speak. He was smart. He took his time. We went over it. He was ready to walk away if this particular seller didn't take the offering, and it turned out well. So, again, very, very cool story, and, again, I think we all can learn from that. And something else... And again, I love these emails because I'm getting them and now you guys get to see what I see and I love that because I feel there's so much to learn from this. Um, this is Chris. He messaged me. He says, hi, I'm interested in getting one of your 10-foot VFD cable kits. I bought a UCNC and below is what the spindle connector looked like when I opened it and after spending a few minutes cleaning it up, also pictured below is the spindle in order to identify the connector type. My question is, what is the cost for a replacement connector? I think with a bit more cleanup, this one is okay, but if it's only a few dollars, I'd rather use a new one, okay? Now, guys, I don't think I have to say too much after looking at these pictures. You see, these pictures are just horrendous. I mean, I can only zoom in this, I believe, so much. Let me see if I can do it this way. Yeah. I can zoom in that way. You can see this connector is completely obliterated. I have no idea what this is. I don't know if that's chewing gum. I have no idea what this is. Uh, this looks like solid core leads. I mean, I have no idea why someone would ever use solid core cable to wire this connector. This is a large HY connector. And this is proof is in the pudding of what I've been discussing. And I believe there are many spindles out there like this. And it just gets worse as we look at this. Here is the connector that he attempted to clean up. And I was honest with him. I will not use a connector that looks like that. So if you want me to build a spindle cable, rest assured my name is on it. Okay. What you'll accept for yourself is your business um, and safety, of course. But what I produce is my business. And I will not sign my name on something like that. Because you got to realize I'm putting my name at risk. I'm putting my business name at risk. And I look at something like that as pure risk all the way around. There is no reason for a $20 investment to use this. We have no idea if damage was done. We can see all this burning. And I don't know if this piece is missing here. I have no idea. And I get this question a lot. He is not the only one who will ask me these type of questions. Hey, I've got this connector. And I tried to solder it. Usually it starts with something like that. I tried to solder it. I attempted to solder it. My skills aren't up to your skills. What do you think? And here's what I think. If it looks even close to this, not happening. If it's something you attempted to do and you want to send it to me for analyzation, I'm going to charge you for it. Because guess what? I have to remove all the work you did if anything is there, and I've done it many times, and then I have to do corrective action to make sure that the cable is safe. No one should be using a connector that is potentially safe. If the word potential comes up with safety, you don't want to be involved in it. Okay? Your insurance company doesn't want you involved in it. This is treacherous. So, of course, for the $20 investment, Chris went through and I sent him a new connector and one of my VFD cable kits. The question is, is how do you let, and this is something that I've said many times, you could see this brown shadow here. It's actually a black shadow. We know this is arcing. We know something here happened to this spindle, and I wanted him to proceed with caution even using this spindle because we, we have no idea. And this is proof in the pudding again as to why I tell you guys be very careful buying used equipment. We do not know the history of this equipment. But let's ask each other a logical question. Let's think about this for a minute. If we see a spindle in this shape with this amount of burn mark on it from arcing, which we know, and we come over here and we see this connector after he cleaned it and it looks like that. And we see this connector prior to him cleaning it and it looks like that. What's the odds? What's the odds of the robot itself, the chassis, being in good shape? 
and being maintained the way a robot of that caliber should? I just want that question to be answered because be ready for it. Be ready to expect if this is what you're seeing here, it's like buying a car and draining the oil the first time and seeing black, like the oil is completely black, then expect there's going to be other things wrong with it. Now, of course, Chris didn't let me know how he made out with that chassis, and I hope he did well. But I'm telling you right now, when it comes to robots that are used for production at any capacity, where a lot of guys are saying, oh, I'm using it for hobby, hobby to me is just a term used. There's two terms in this niche that that term comes up and is actually defined by either a toy or – and why I say a toy, if it's a cheap machine like 800 bucks, 500 bucks, hobby type machines in that caliber, toy. Okay, we've got automation, we've got somewhat control over motion, but you're not going to be producing heavy, heavy uh, types of products typically with that equipment. The other word that defines hobby is a guy who hasn't found a way to make money with his machine yet. Okay, and that's the other term. When I see this, typically this spindle, I can tell you you can make a lot of money with this spindle. And I can also tell you that it's it's really got a lot of power in the right hands. Whoever wired this is, like I said, it, it, it's a sheer sign of incompetence, especially using solid core wire, which we can see right here. I have no idea what was done to this piece of equipment. But I would definitely tell anyone looking at used equipment that have telltale signs like this, where we were looking at the the uh, uh, mic system where, again, an email was sent. We just had pictures to go by. We didn't see anything at all like this. We still have potential hidden risk because Mike hasn't gone there to go see it. In this case, this guy opened this up and seen this. Of course, he probably didn't see this right away, but I'm sure he probably saw this burn mark prior to him getting the system, and that would have drew me a red flag. I hope he didn't pay much for the system because, again, that is not – at all acceptable and it's a red flag for you guys who are on a tight budget looking to buy used equipment and retrofit keep in mind best practice again I wouldn't even try to run the spindle I wouldn't test it I'd be terrified we have no idea what's wrong with that remember these spindle bodies are stainless steel so again full conduction and you can see here that's an arcing burn I can tell you right now and again, you know that connector did not get looking like this because this was assembled correctly, especially with solid core wire. So when I'm talking about safety, when I'm discussing about best practice, these are the messages I'm getting, guys. This is real. This is exactly what I'm talking about. And I want you guys all to see because, again, this is exactly what I'm dealing with on a daily basis. And this is why I'm telling you, please be careful. You know, I don't want to see people get burned, so to speak, in both physical and, you know, we're talking about this in, in both senses because we see things like this and it's just scary. I mean, you can, only, you can only ask yourself, what did this guy who owned this machine prior to Chris, what did he do to it? You know, how did this occur? How did, I mean, how did someone with, you know, above average competence, above an 80 IQ would let something like this go? You know, I mean, it's, it's really scary. It scares me a lot, and it's just it, – what's really frightening is you put other people at risk when you do things incorrectly with this amount of electricity. I mean this is not DC voltage. This is not stuff – and even DC voltage, it can start fires very, very easily. We need to look at this stuff, and I want you guys, if you're on a tight budget, please be careful. I mean if you're going to invest in used equipment, like I said, get a second opinion. Make sure that the piece of equipment makes sense for your application and then invest. Don't go out, bite the bullet, so to speak. Oh, I had to get it. I hear it all the time. I had to get it. I had to get it. It was such a good deal. I had to get it. And then they get home and they're like disheartened. Oh, my God. I had no idea. And then they start calling to get 16 different quotes. And usually the quotes end up small in the beginning and then get higher at the end. I very seldom in robotics, at least in this genre, ever see it go the opposite where it's high and then it gets smaller because most guys will say well this guy said that to me I've had guys do it to me they'll, they'll try to work one bit against me oh I've had a guy that said he'll do it for this and it's like okay great what is he doing what parts is he using you know are we using the same components are we soldering everything how is the machine going to be grounded well I didn't ask that okay well when you get those details come back to me you know, I mean, it's no different than going buy a car. Make sure you're comparing apples to apples because a lot of times you're not. The guy's using crimp connectors everywhere, 
and going through the system and saying, well, I'm going to, uh, you know, never discuss grounding. That's totally different than a guy who's soldering everything with solder, heat shrink, flux on every connection. I mean, we're talking just just the labor involved in that. It, it amplifies exponentially. So keep in mind of what we're doing. OK, things like this. I again, I have no idea how this happened. I can't I can't tell if, if this happened just straight up arcing or what. But I can tell you right now, this is scary. Because I know this is tip of the iceberg as far as I wish I could have seen pictures of the remaining chassis. I hope the bearings in it are good. I hope – I mean things like this are usually just tips of the iceberg. And that's when you usually get the great deals because robots that are productive and making money for whoever owns them, they're typically going to be sold at a reasonable price. If they're not – it's either one of two things. Either it's above the knowledge base of the person who bought it, which I've seen many times, and it does occur. I've seen estate sales where you'll get a great deal every now and then. But most of the time, when you see things like this, it's usually going to be a problem. It was a problem when the owner had it, the original owner, and now he's passed it on. And now it's what mitigation of risk does this new owner, Chris, in this particular instance, what is he willing to accept? So again, I hope for his his case in this particular instance, I hope all it was was just a spindle and a spindle cable and everything is set to go and we're good to go there. In Mike's case, it worked out for him. And once again, showing you these emails, I think is total, it, it's a way for us all to learn because like I said, I'm always learning. I'm always listening to what is being presented to me. But when I see things like this, I want you to see this. I want you to see what other people are going through who are looking in this genre because you're going to learn from this at a level that's far greater than what's typically being seen. And I can tell you right now, most vendors are never going to show you their emails. These are real emails, guys. This is not me making anything up. And I want you to see this. I want you to be careful and I want you to be safe, most of all. So again, I hope you guys learned something from this video. Don't be cheap with learning. And I cannot emphasize that enough. I did a video prior of knowing who to hire. Don't be cheap with that. Also, don't be cheap with learning and investing in yourself. If you're trying to get involved in this genre for robotics, you know what these robots can do in the right hands for production. I'm telling you now, like I said, it's hard to argue that that actual chassis that Mike purchased was 4,500 listed. We talked about it, got it down to 2,500. He's already two grand up. And on top of that, the only thing it cost him was $80 to talk about it. We put together a plan and it worked. So think about that. Think about it. And that's why I say weigh everything, weigh where you're going. In this particular instance, Chris, we got him set up with the cable. Everything is set. He's on his way. And thank God he's not using the same connector because, again, please, please do not use or reuse connectors that are burned, arced. Anything that looked like this before, I would never trust. And, again, there's a point where you say saving money is good and then there's a point where you're just being dangerous. And, you know, being frugal is one thing. Don't ever be penny wise and dollar foolish. My dad always taught me that. I believe in that. And as we get more in depth with business, as you guys grow with your business, because your knowledge is going to grow with your business. Believe me, it's, I'm always learning. I always am learning. And I try to make that the key. And I'll tell you something that I, I really hope many of you adapt to. And this is something that I, I talk with my better half all the time on. And it's, it's something I really live by. And that is that we all make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. I make more mistakes, I think, than any person I've ever seen. And I'm not afraid to admit that. But the difference I try to do is every mistake I make, I want to learn something from that mistake. I strive for every detail in that mistake that I made. I want to make sure that I try never to make that mistake again. That, to me, defines your intelligence. If I see stuff like this happening over and over and over and over again to the same person, then you know there's something wrong. And I say that, and even though it sounds logical and it sounds more like common sense, it's not always practice. So again, think about that for a minute. Think about it. I mean, I know it makes sense to many of you. I think we're, I don't think many of you would watch a video at least to this point if it didn't, but that is the key here with CNC. Everything is trial and error. I'd say about 95% of it because you are your software programmer, you're your mechanic, you're going to be your own engineer, whether mechanical or electrical. Learning all this stuff, I'm not there with you all the time. You know, the engineers are not going to be there. The, the tech support technicians, they're not going to be there. Software technicians, they're not going to be there. It's how well you're able to adapt with all of those facets. That's what will make you sharp. 
and that's what's going to make you grow. So that's why I say every day that goes by, keep in mind, that's what you should be focusing on. We'll learn something for whatever mistake you make, learn something from it. Make that mistake no more. And I promise you, it'll progress in other areas. It makes a tremendous difference. So again, guys, I can't say thank you enough for listening to me talk about this. I hope you guys have learned something. Um, again, take your time. If you have any questions, if you require quotes or consultations, don't be afraid to message me. Uh, right now, I'm kind of booked lately. I've been very busy, but uh, I'll get with you as soon as possible. Please don't spend frivolously. If you don't need it, don't buy it. If there is something that you need, again, if there's a, a part, a component for a machine, I get told that a lot. You always tell me not to buy unless I need it. And again, it's just small business to me. I don't buy unless I need. And if I can get away without it and I'm safe and everything is fine, so be it. But I'm a big believer in testing. Do I need it really? Let me test first and see. And then I'll upgrade the motor or do whatever I need to do. You do the same. Practice that. You know, but again, if you need to contact me direct, storm2313 at gmail.com. You can also see the link to my store, my, my uh, eBay store in the description. It's eDealers Direct. Uh, again, I got over a thousand followers on my store now, and I'm like blown away by that. So I can't say thank you enough for that. To all my subscribers, I love you guys. Thank you for listening to me talk. Uh, thank you all for your support. Take care.